Hello everybody and welcome to another Elevator Parts video. Today we're going to be working on the biggest panel I've ever worked on. <laughs> An entire Dover Impulse panel, which is taller than me. <laughs> this is the, uh, this is the big boy. So this is gonna be a very interesting and a very fun project. Got a lot of cool ideas for this thing. So before we get started, this panel was given to me by Mike from Automatic Elevator. So Mike, huge thank you for this panel. This thing was quite uh, interesting to get back from San Antonio. This panel traveled all the way from Mike's shop into Andrew's car to his dad's house where it sat there for a week. And then it made its way all the way back to Missouri in Andrew's little bitty car. So this thing has, uh, it's, it's, it's been around. But here it is at the elevator workshop. And we're going to make it epic. So before we get started with any of the wiring or any cleaning or anything, we just want to take a look at this panel and see how it all works because Dover Impulse is a very famous fixture. We all know and love these panels. So let's take a closer look at how it all works. So up here on the front, we have our indicator, which is a very, uh, this is a very iconic indicator here. Obviously up here, we have our numbers. In this case, we have an analog display. And in some cases we have digital displays. And then down here, we have our logo, Dover. We have our emergency light and the capacity. Now, sometimes you might see this. You might see ThyssenKrupp. That's because it can be stuck on with this little sticker. You see, it just has some tape and it sticks right over the logo. We're obviously not going to be uh, modernizing our elevator to a ThyssenKrupp because we like Dovers. So moving down the panel, well, we have a lot of metal. <laughs> not a whole lot to see here, but typically, you know, sometimes they'd stick things on here, but we're not sticking anything on there. And that brings us down to the buttons. So this you can see here is an 80s Dover Impulse and we can see that by a couple things. One, we have the blue door control buttons here and we also have the old micro switch keys. And we are also missing fire service. So our little top panel here, we've got these three little spacers and then the two keys, which we can use this key right here. So for our fan, we have three positions, low, off, and high. Stick the key in there, click some low, and there's high. And these key switches are interesting. They, they have a little spring in them. So you can see here, they kind of spring into the off position. And then when you actually click it in, it stays in place, which is kind of interesting. Same thing as with the light, except this is only a two position switch. Again, it has that springiness and then it clicks into the off position. So these are neat little key switches and a lot of these get replaced. So it's kind of neat to uh, still have these on here. So here on the next panel, we have our floor buttons. We have our little star in our one and the two. So we can also see here, this is an 80s impulse because we have the older buttons. You can hear no click, they just press. And over here on two, unfortunately this button has been replaced with a new one. And finally down here on the bottom panel, we have three buttons and a key switch. We've got our door open button, which has the older micro switch. We've got our stop run key switch, which uses this key here. We turn it in, turn it on to run. You can hear there's no actual click. You see, see it turns, so it just turns between stop and run. I'll show you how that works. We've got our alarm button, which is again an old, an old switch, and the door close button, which is another old switch. And down here, this is where a phone door would be, but unfortunately, I don't have the phone door right now, so you would kind of reach in right here, then the door would kind of swing open, and then your phone would be in here. But for now, we've just got this uh, little plastic ring. Hopefully eventually I can get a door because that would look really cool. But for now, we just kind of have this uh, this this hole in the way and that completes the panel. So we've taken a look at this thing from the front. Let's take a look at it from the back. And here is the back of the Dover Impulse panel, which is very rusty. You can see <laughs> it's fairly fresh rust. But anyway, let's go ahead and break down what we can see in the back here. So starting up here at the top, we've got our little floor numbers, the one and the two. And these are not actually uh, LEDs. They're just little, um, they're fake. <laughs> so these aren't actually dot matrix displays. They're just these little uh, light boxes here that have the holes in it that make the appearance of a dot matrix display. So that's kind of interesting. And when you pull these little black pins out, we have some bulbs. In this case, we've got some small red LEDs. They're 28 volts which we're gonna be changing that. And on this side, we still have some incandescent bulbs. So it's kind of interesting. This is the one and this is the two. Here's a little connector that would hook up to the controller. 
which comes down this way. And that brings us to our emergency light. So this here is the circuit board for the emergency light. Over here, we've got this little test button. This is what you would use to test it. And it used to be mounted down here, but unfortunately it kind of broke off. This probably tells you if the battery's working. We've got our bulbs here. These are little nine volt bulbs or at least they work on a 9 volt battery. And we got our transformer and all the hookups here. So kind of neat, but like I said, this, this would normally be hooked up to a battery. So if the power goes out, the lights kick on. Got some huge clumps of wires here, which run down the side of the panel. And this is where it originally would have gone to the controller, which has been, uh, well, chopped off as you can see. And then that comes down here. We've got a few more of these little connectors. This one's, I guess, missing something. And that brings us down to the buttons. So up here on the key switches, these are kind of our older style of, uh, of switch, the old micro switches. And you can see how these are plugged in right here. Same thing with this key switch. This one only has one contact because obviously there's only one position. And this one has two because we have two positions. Down one more, we can see the difference between the old and the new type of button. We've got our new one over here with the little uh, hammers that come down and hit the switches. And then we've got the old one right here which the entire thing is just one unit. Moving down one more, we've got, well, this huge clump of wires here, but we also have our door controls, our alarm, the stop switch, and then this is the uh, other button. So the older micro switch, you'll notice here there's this little metal clip, and that keeps me from pulling the switch out of the button. However, I've taken the clip off of this one, and to take it out, you push it in and turn it a little bit, and it comes right out. You can see there's the button cap right there, and here's the actual switch. Now something interesting about these, this is how much the button actually presses, like this. But if you press it in all the way, it actually clicks, which is quite interesting. But like I said before, it only presses it down this far, and you have to push it in even further for the click. And these have a little bulb inside. Now this one in particular doesn't because it's a door switch, but if you wanted to change the bulb, you lift up on the cap, and the little cap pops off like this. And then down inside is where your bulb would be. And then this little metal pin right here, you lift this up and it would pull the bulb out. So it's a pretty pretty genius design. It's actually pretty neat. It's unfortunate that they don't use these anymore. But as for this little switch, I mean, it's quite interesting how this is uh, put together. And then to put the cap on, you just lay it on there and press it in. As for the little stop switch here, if you look closely, there's just a normal sliding switch. And when I turn the key, you'll notice it's simply sliding it back and forth. Hence why there's no click or any position for it. And on top there is where the little pins are hooked up to. Now that pretty much concludes taking a look at how this works. But something else that's kind of interesting is how do you change buttons on this thing? Well, before we start taking all this apart, what I wanna do is pull all the wires off. Because, I mean, that's, that's the first step in wiring a panel, at least for me, is I like to clean it up and declutter it. So we have a nice blank canvas, and maybe, maybe it wouldn't help to wipe off the dust. Ah, that looks much nicer now. I've taken all of the wires off. Cleaned off all the surfaces as the best I can. Obviously it doesn't really matter that it's dusted in the back because you don't really see that, but just for ease of working and not having to get so dusty, it'll be a little bit nicer. So a big question you may have is, how do you change these buttons? Or how do you at least change the things on the front? Well, it's kind of interesting how this works. So this here is your little base piece for the impulse. And it's in a different position based on where you're looking. So it's like this, if it's an indicator, because it's gonna be facing down. And it's gonna be like this, if it's the buttons, because they're facing up. You'll notice each one of these has these little tiny pins in there. And if we take a look at the impulse buttons, you'll notice they as well have those little pins. And that's because you can lay buttons, you'll see it stays in place with those little pins. And the same thing can be found on the key switches, so they can go in there as well. But we also have the little metal pieces which go across the sides. These little metal pieces to be exact. So to change the buttons, you'll notice there are these four nuts on either corner. You have to take all four of those off. And if you press on that, you'll notice that the metal piece comes off like that. There's the metal. And the other one comes out. Hopefully the entire thing doesn't 
fall down. And now we can see the panels. So here is the little blank spacers. So you can see they're literally blank. These could theoretically have whatever you want on them. But anyway, let's take a look at these key switches a little bit more because these are interesting. So this comes out here like this. Let's go over to the workbench and break this down. So here's our little switch. And if we put our key in and turn it like this, it activates it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this little thing apart. So if we just gently pull out the front panel here. Okay, so once that comes off, here's the little cover. And then we can pull out the key. It looks as though it has the very similar base as the other one. And I'm not going to take this one apart, but my guess is somehow the cap, this cover comes off and you could change the key. Here's a little switch here, just like that. So this is kind of neat to see the key and the button. So this is the button and here's the key. They're both the same size. Basically look exactly the same, except this one has the lamp, of course. And that's pretty neat. Kind of cool that Dover used these little micro switches. And obviously the same thing will apply to the light. So we're just gonna push this back in place. Okay, so we got the panels back in. You see on the metal pieces, the uh, little screws are offset. So you have to put them in a certain way. Simply press them in there and you can kind of see it's all bent there. So once we get them all in there and push it down, there we go. These buttons were not the uh, easiest to work on, as you can see. It's quite a pain in the butt to get all this off. And now down here we have two different types of buttons. And this is gonna be, it's more of a personal kind of thing because it kind of bothers me that one is old and one is replaced. So unfortunately, since I don't have another base for the old, we're gonna have to put a new in and I wanna have consistency with this panel. So what I thought I could do, I'll put a new button in here. So we'll have two clicky buttons here. We'll leave all these buttons original. And then I'll take the base of the old button on this and put it into my terminal call station. So I'll have an old call station, a new call station. And then on this panel, we'll have old buttons and new buttons. So while I was pulling out the one button, I figured I'd go ahead and just show you. Here's what one of the numbers looks like. There's a one and there's the star. So here's our new button. And for consistency, this one only has one working micro switch. So we as well will be using only one working micro switch. So let's see if we can get this down in here without everything exploding. All right, so after uh, everything falling out on me, the new button has been installed. So we have our two buttons here, which both look pretty awesome. And now we have consistency. As much as I don't wanna put new buttons in, this kind of thing would just drive me nuts. So here we have the new button put in. And you can see here, now we have a consistent two clicky buttons here. And we still have our three original older switch buttons down here. So now that brings us to the next step, which is making this do something. And I don't think I've really talked about what we're gonna do with it. So what I've done is ordered an Arduino board and another base. And what I'm gonna do is put the base somewhere here in the back, probably here in the middle. Look, we got a little present laying here. But somewhere maybe back in here, we're gonna put an Arduino board. I'm gonna hook up the floor buttons, the alarm, the stop run, this switch here, our emergency light, and the indicator all to the board. And it's basically like a working elevator. You'll press two, a little light will come on on the button. Sometimes you're gonna go by it, it's gonna make a buzz, change over to two, press one, it'll go down into the same thing. Pressing the alarm will make the buzzer go off. And then I'm gonna hook up this light switch to turn on the emergency light. And then obviously we have all these other buttons. These are gonna, this isn't gonna be used, this isn't gonna be used, and this switch. We have more pins on the Arduino, so we can always hook up more things in the future. So that is the plan for this panel. I think it's gonna be pretty epic when it's done. But what I'd like to do is go ahead and start wiring all of this up so that all I have to do is just put wires into the baseboard, plug the Arduino in, and we're all good to go. So it's time to get wiring. So here we have our three indicator wires hooked up. I went ahead and moved them to the other side. So we've got I1, I2, and then a black wire, which is a common. So that'll be common ground. So all these are gonna be placed over here and zip tied nice and tight. Okay, so we have two more wires now. We've got these two on the side, which hook up directly to the nine volt battery because we need a nice nine volts to go through here. And this is also gonna allow us to use this without turning on the Arduino board, which is pretty cool. So we've got this thicker wire here, which hooks up to both of the wires for the bulbs. 
which comes down and hooks up to our little switch here. And then off the other side, we've got our connector for the battery. And then we have our little ground right here, which goes to the negative. So like I said before, all the grounds will be hooked up eventually to the, uh, to the ground. So what I'm gonna do now is wire manage this because we're not gonna be adding anything else up here. And there we go, all nice and tidied on the side. We've got our indicator wires down on the right side here. They come out right here. So we have our three connectors. And then over here on this side, we've got our little light switch, which obviously eventually this battery will be mounted here and the Arduino will be there. So we're making some good progress. Next step, we need to start working on the lower half of the panel. Okay, we've got some progress with the buttons here. So first thing we've got, got our little LED parts hooked up here that the bulbs put in, and we've got some wires for that. We've got L1 and L2, which means light one, light two, and then we've got our little common ground. Then we also have our alarm button hooked up. Again, we've got two wires, common ground, and the AL for alarm. And then next thing I need to do is hook up the buttons. So we have these little pins here. I don't have, I don't have the right wires for it, so we're using these. So I'll hook these together for a common. This will be our common ground. And then we'll have two buttons, so B1 and B2, which will go up to the Arduino. Okay, wiring is complete. Well, at least all the buttons and the lights and all that sort of thing. So yeah, we've got a lot of wires hanging down here. And these are all going to be brought up on the side and nicely tidied up and wire managed a lot. All right, look what we got here. We've got our base and we've got our board. So now we can start hooking it up to the panel and wiring everything together. All right, so we've got the little base mounted on here. And I put some electrical tape underneath so we don't accidentally short. And I've got this spacer here. So the next thing I need to do is hook the wires up. All right, we have all the wires hooked up to the board. Got our power supply hooked up, our buzzer. Here's where the battery's gonna go. We're gonna have to do some more wire management, of course. But the next thing is to unbox the Arduino. So I've got this little cord, and here's the board itself. So I'm gonna open this board, program it up, and uh, see if it works. All right, the code is finished. Let's go ahead and upload it to the board. You can see there, it's done. All right, the moment of truth. All right, well, stuff definitely happened. All right, guys, so after a couple days of experimentation and rewiring and just frustration, <laughs> this thing is finished. Didn't really film a lot of the struggle as it was on and off. I got frustrated with the project, we put it down, kept coming back to it, and I finally have worked out a solution to make it work. So what went wrong? Well, first of all, we were gonna run this whole thing with one nine volt battery, like the whole circuit. We're gonna run the Arduino, this, the buzzer, everything on one nine volt. And that's a lot for one nine volt battery. So that was the first problem right there. We can't run all of this on one nine volt. So what I then decided to do is break it into two nine volt circuits. One nine volt would run our little lamp and our buzzer, and the other one would run the Arduino. Well, that didn't work either, because the nine volt was still not enough to power everything on the Arduino. And the big problem was the relay, because I use a relay to activate the alarm, because we can ring the alarm with it off, like that. And the, and the Arduino would activate a relay, which runs the buzzer. So that relay was drawing too much power, and would shut the board down. But when I would plug it into my computer, it wouldn't, it would have enough power. So what I've ended up doing is using this power bank to run the Arduino. And conveniently enough, it's Midwest Elevator. Thank you Midwest Elevator for the battery pack. So everything is working good. So obviously we cannot use our little stop run key switch to turn on the panel. So enough chatter, let's take a look at the panel. First thing you may notice is that I have shined up and cleaned the metal. And it definitely looks a whole lot better. And obviously we have our buttons right here. And then down where the phone door should be, we have our battery pack. So if you want to use the door panel, first thing you gotta do is turn it on. So there's a little button right here on the top of the power bank. You just push it. And it's gonna do a little initialization. And now it's turned on. To go up to two, you simply press the two button. 
and we're now at two. Go back to one. And we're at one. We'll do it one more time. And we're at one. And now another cool thing is since this thing is not drawing much power right now. Now it's drawing a lot for a nine volt, but for this little power bank, it's not drawing a whole lot. So what'll actually happen is the power bank will cut off after a few seconds, like that. So you can't accidentally leave it on. Now it could be a good and a bad thing because it could just shut off on you, but it's really easy to come back because you can't push the button. Just push this little button here, and it comes back on. And you can start using it again. So super easy to use and it has an automatic shut off feature. And obviously we can press the alarm button and ring the buzzer. And since the alarm is on its own circuit, the Arduino does not have to be on in order for the alarm to work. Now obviously it's shut off, so the buttons don't work, but you can ring that. And then we can turn on the emergency light by placing in our key and turning on the light switch. And we have lights. And if we shut the lights off, See, it lights up pretty nicely with the lights off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Go to two. You can see my lens is very dirty. One. Here we are at one. But anyway, that was a video of wiring up this Dover impulse panel. Definitely was a lot of fun to do. If I can eventually get this thing off this power bank someday, I will, but I kind of like the power bank, it's kind of neat. And if I can get the door on there, that would make it even cooler. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time.